Gentlemen, and welcome to this very special launch event by Ultraviolet Automotive. My name is Anuj, and I'm going to be your host for today. We're here today to celebrate the past, enjoy the present, and look forward to the future. But most importantly, we're here to showcase to you the continuous and dedicated efforts put in by the team at Ultraviolet that's going to give you a chance to feast your eyes on a beast of a machine very shortly. But before we go any further, for the fantastic audience that you are, for the beautiful setting that we have, and for the fact that all of you have taken the time out to be here, I want each and every one of you to give yourselves a big round of applause, because none of this would have been possible without you. So put your hands together, everybody, and welcome once again. Now, like I said earlier, very shortly, you're going to be seeing an amazing product that's going to be on this stage. And you're going to be wondering, is it a bird? Is it a plane? Is it a superbike? Can an electric bike go from 0 to 60 in under 3 seconds? Can a speed demon also be an eco-warrior? Can you make a statement without being too loud? Can you have too much of a good thing? We at Ultraviolet were faced with the exact same questions. But we were fueled by not taking no for an answer. And the reason for that is that we're standing here proud to show you what we've been up to. Now that you all know what's in store for you, let me tell you what I need from each and every one of you in the audience. It's very simple. All I need from you is to have a big smile on your face, always, because today is a happy occasion. We're here to celebrate. Beautiful smile, sir. Keep that going. Apart from that, I want you to keep your energy levels up, high, and skyrocketing. At no point in time at today's launch do we want to hear silence like this. So feel free to relax and give yourselves a shout out and be happy. All right? Very good. Apart from all that, I want you to remember that you have to follow two very important rules. Now, I'm a little strict about these rules, so I want you to listen up. Rule number one is that whenever there is somebody on this stage, either talking to you or presenting, you need to scream, shout, whistle, make as much noise as possible, and give them a huge round of applause. Rule number two is that whenever there is somebody on this stage, either talking to you or presenting, you need to scream, shout, whistle, make as much noise as possible, and give them a huge round of applause. Simple two rules. I don't think all of you caught it, because right now there is somebody on this stage talking to you, and I don't hear any noise, Bangalore. So come on, one more time. I'm going to count to three. I want to see all your hands up in the air. Big round of applause, a nice shout out, and let's start this on a super high. Come on, everybody, make some noise. Fantastic. That's the level of energy we need. Welcome once again to this very special event. To tell you a little more, Ultraviolet Automotive is an innovator in sustainable mobility and energy infrastructure. Established in 2016, Ultraviolet Automotive was founded by Narayan Subramaniam and Neeraj Rajmohan. The company was conceptualized to create top-of-the-line mobility solutions that's driven by progressive design and an energy-efficient technology. Today, Ultraviolet Automotive is developing India's first ecosystem of high-performance electric vehicles and future-ready energy infrastructure. As part of the vision, Ultraviolet is today unveiling their very first product, the F77. Inspired by the innovation and engineering that typifies the aviation industry, driven by the need to design a motorcycle for tomorrow, hell-bent on challenging the status quo, and resolute about redefining electric. The result, the F77, more aviation, less automobile, a bike for the future that is here and now. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome once again to the launch of the amazing F77. Welcome to an era of redefining electric. And remembering the two rules that I talked to you about, I'm going to call and state someone very special. I want you to give them a huge, huge round of applause. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for the founder and CEO of Ultraviolet Automotive. You all know who he is. Put your hands together for the amazing Narayan Subramaniam, everybody. Welcome. Uh, really pleased to see so many of you here today. Uh, momentous occasion for us. Uh, right from the point where Neeraj and I, 2016, when we got things off the ground to where we are now. Right? So, 
I'm going to run you through sort of a technology and product showcase of how we've gone about building the whole product from scratch. And uh, before all that, I'd like to thank some of our very early supporters, friends and family, and of course, the Ultraviolet team. Without you guys, none of this would have been possible. Right, to begin with, though, I was talking about 2016, right? And this is where sometimes a blank canvas can be your most powerful tool. What I mean by this is the EV industry is at such a nascent stage in India. Uh, the way we went about conceptualizing how we go about it was starting from scratch. We looked at a lot of the companies out there in different parts of the world and to meet Indian requirements and to meet the requirements of our future, of our consumers tomorrow. There was nothing that suited any of this. So we went back to the drawing board, created everything from scratch. And when I say everything, I mean every single thing on the vehicle, right? Now, where, in what other industry do you find this happen? And this typifies the aviation and uh, aerospace industries where constantly the boundaries of technology and performance are being pushed, right? Uh, limits are being rewritten, technology is upgraded at a super fast rate. And this sort of has been our inspiration and the approach that we've taken towards product development as well. And this sort of seeps through our DNA. We have some people on the team as well who come with various uh, backgrounds in technology in the air aviation aircraft industry. So to start out with, when I said blank canvas, we were at a point in time where we were thinking about the specifications of the product. And it soon became apparent that unless you, there is enough focus on the energy side, the whole EV industry is not going to take off in a large manner. So we were clear at that point that not only are we going to design a product that significantly outperforms every IC engine counterpart out there, but we are focusing on the energy side as well. Now this is an area that is sort of untapped, and this is where we felt there was a need for innovative disruption. And moving on from here, we come to the point of the perception of electric vehicles. So over the last decade or so, we've seen an uh, influx of different companies in India. And what's happened is that electric has become synonymous with low performance and low quotient of desirability. And for a vehicle to be of good value proposition to any of us out there, it needs to sort of break both of these myths, right? And we've seen one company do this very successfully. It's taken about 10 years to get there. You know, I think you know who I'm talking about. None other than Tesla. And what we at Ultraviolet are doing is following not too different an approach, where everything that we put out there is going to stand for premium quality, super high levels of performance, and an altogether new user experience. And this leads me to creating the identity of the product. Now, when we say product, I think what we felt at that point was we need to create an identity for the EV industry, right? All the baggage that's been collected over all these years needs to be, all the myths need to be dispelled. And the identity we see is what we believe the future of the country is going to be, future of all of us is going to be. And we believe that identity is bold, that identity is smart and progressive. And what you're about to see in all of what we are going to showcase is this sort of DNA has gone through every aspect of product development and reflects on the uh, final output of the product as well. Now, coming to the exterior design aspect, right? So, of course, when I'm talking about a desirable vehicle, there's a lot of, lot of factors that come into play. The most important is when you walk into a room and you see that machine and you go like, oh, wow, I need to have this. Now, that is a result of a lot of emotions coming through. And for us, it wasn't just that, like in an aircraft where every single part is functional. So there is functional honesty, and this is part of our philosophy. This functional honesty flows into every aspect of the vehicle that you're about to see, starting with the exterior design. And when I say design, it was going to be aerodynamic and super streamlined. And how does this make a difference? All of this translates back into how we improve the efficiency of the overall drivetrain to begin with. What you're looking at here is some footage from our internal lab reviews, uh, airflow analysis that has gone in at a component level as well as an integrated bike level. So what we're doing here is channeling air on the outside in a manner that creates 
absolutely no turbulence whatsoever. So we've achieved a really low drag coefficient on the vehicles. And the next part of what you're about to see later on the presentation is how the same airflow is channeled on the internal for the cooling as well. This leads us to performance. So like I mentioned earlier, there were no benchmarks. We had to draw down the performance of what this machine is supposed to output. And today we've surpassed what we set out to achieve. Right? So when I'm talking about performance, what are the important aspects? Lightweight. Like an aircraft, saving every gram goes into optimizing that power to weight ratio for us. Now this was really important. Now there was some amount of complexity here because I mentioned talking about innovation on the energy, right? So this led us to modular batteries, which meant you can take the batteries out of the bike. You're living on the 15th floor of a sky rise. You go to your room, plug it into charge there as well. So this is the amount of user experience that we built into the whole product. And making sure the batteries are removable, keeping the ergonomics intact, making it super simple for all of us to use it, meant the chassis had to be redefined. So all of the existing trellis frames, delta box frames, all of them do not have the provision for making this happen which meant we had to go back to the sketchbook, start from scratch, get into the entire analysis of the vehicle, different components, chassis, etc. <laughs> and this is the production ready frame that you're seeing here. It's a suspended motor mount and the entire mainframe, the subframe and the battery frame sort of use the motor mount as a stress member itself. Now, this took us three years to get it intact. Kudos to the design and the uh, analysis teams to get it in place. And the way we went about it again is quite different from how any typical OEM would approach. So we sort of, I mean, if you think about aircrafts, so you have to sort of be 99.99% sure that that plane is going to fly before you build it, right? So that's the amount of simulation that goes into, in, I mean, behind the scenes. And that is sort of how we built out the systems here as well. So what you see on the screen now, different components starting from the frame, the motor mounts, the swing arm, and smaller components from the axle brackets, the triple clamp, the gear transmission, the pitch, the angle of the gears, every single aspect had to be created to ground up from the transmission to the chassis to the overall vehicle architecture. And <laughs> this was a monumental effort and we've gotten it spot on. Now, the next aspect of the air, what I'd mentioned earlier, the airflow on the internals is what we'll come to here, is there are three components on the electric vehicle that needs cooling. The battery packs, the entire motor drivetrain, as well as the controller and the associated electronics. And for us, when we started out, we were thinking about having um, radiators and coolants, etc. But as we progressed, I think Neeraj will come to this in a bit when we talk about the battery tech and all the IP and the patents that have been filed on the battery side of things have provisioned for completely passive air cooling. So there is no motor, no pump, no coolant, no moving parts absolutely in any part of the drivetrain. Now, I think this is a question that's led to a lot of debate across the planet. What is the sound of an EV? And um, I mean, for some segments, we think it's okay to be silent, but there's a lot of you bikers out here. Would you really like to ride a, like a super powerful bike that is all silent all the time? <laughs> exactly. And that was our uh, sort of assumption as well. Uh, through all of our years of riding motorcycles, though we know that we have to move towards a clean, sustainable future. The sound is a key element of the identity of the vehicle. And this is something we do not want to compromise. Having said this, the sound is honest. Right? What, like this again goes back to the aircraft principles. Of whatever aspect of the vehicle, it is functionally honest. So, what you're about to listen to in a bit is, I'll get to that. Uh, and what the EVs could possibly sound like I think you all know what a jet engine or a turbine sounds like, right? And in case you don't, I'll play this for you.
Now that's an engine warming up. No, it's not. It's the F-77. So the, the sound you just heard is the actual sound of the F-77 motorcycle. And if you want more evidence, check this footage out from last week during one of our uh, speed testing sessions. Yes. It's, it's insane. It's like an aircraft. No vibrations, absolutely. You feel like, you feel weightless while riding it. And this leads me to the next bit of performance. We've shown you what the bike is like, or potentially is going to be like, uh, what it looks like on the track. And what better way to show performance than, I think a lot of you out there will recognize this chart. This is VBOX data, which we've captured from our test sessions last week. So what's compiling right now is all the different acceleration timings from 0 to 10, to 20, to 30, to 40. And as of last week, this is official recorded data. <laughs> so 0 to 60 in 2.92 seconds. And 0 to 100 in about 7 seconds. And and believe me, ladies and gentlemen, this is only the starting point. Now coming to a couple of other uh, facts and figures which we like to put in place here. The top speed of the motorcycle, 147 kilometers per hour. <laughs> and a range of 130 to 150 kilometers in the city. And the coolest part, the torque, a staggering 450 Newton meters at the wheel. Now what we've done is built in a lot of flexibility into these systems. We're not, these are all not fixed numbers. You can play around with them to adjust them to any of your riding requirements. Track, city, whatever that might be. We'll get to that in a bit. But before any of that, it's been about three and a half to four years to get to this point. I think for Neeraj and me personally, it's been a longer journey. And um, blood, sweat, tears, a lot of effort gone in, the entire team. And we'd like to showcase a short film to you that sort of puts into perspective the kind of approach we've taken to build things out. Since time immemorial, man has always dreamt of experiencing what it's like to spread his wings and fly. Ultraviolet 
believe in this very dream of creating something that logic would term impossible, rationale would term insane and every left-brained analyst would write off as a pipe dream. But we endure. The curiosity in us persisted. Sketching and shaping ways to overcome, to outrun, to outperform. Over the last four years, we have put principles of aviation at the core of everything we have done. Preempted every minute contingency. Simulated every potential scenario. Welded the smallest joint to perfection. Tested every moving part over and over again. And molded an aerodynamic masterpiece. So that, in essence, sort of sums up our mentality and the way we've gone about it, right? We've dreamt a lot, soon enough got down to getting things done, and today that dream is reality. So introducing the ultraviolet F-77.
unprecedented, uncompromising, the F-77, ladies and gentlemen. So we've spoken about the identity. The machine is here for all of you to see. We've spoken about performance. And now let's get to some super exciting stuff of what all this vehicle can do, apart from the things mentioned previously. And I'd like to call upon to stage my co-founder and CTO, Neeraj Rajmohan, to walk you through this experience. Great. Awesome, guys. So I think what we're talking about here is the vehicle of tomorrow, right? And what we've seen is that all of the vehicles that have been around so far haven't sort of been built out, uh, ground up to meet the requirements of the future. And what I'm talking about is sort of the ex entire experience around how this vehicle operates. And the idea here is that it needs to be smart. It needs to be seamless in terms of the experience, right? So what we're going to quickly run through is a few screens on our connected mobile app and the entire ultraviolet connected experience. So this is the login, and once you're done logging in, this is your dashboard, right? So one of the most basic features that we felt was missing in all of the vehicles of today is something that is already there in consumer electronics. You have features like find my iPhone, find my Android phone. Why does this feature not, why is it not there on our vehicles, right? So this is core to what we're building out. We've built the vehicle ground up. It has LTE connectivity. It has an embedded eSIM card. It's part of the package. And it has GPS and uh, tracking. And at any point of time, you have a full view into where your vehicle is, what is the status on the batteries, what is the charge levels. And you can even sort of locate your vehicle in a large parking lot using your mobile phone, right? So that's the kind of, design that we've done ground up. And that's just to get started. Now coming to, this is the most exciting part in terms of performance, right? Now for us, there are different modes of riding. There's rides of, um, there are different modes and one of those riding modes is in the city. And what you're seeing here is the insane mode of riding where, for example, you have control on the speed. You can actually play around with the speed, the maximum speed of the vehicle. You have control on the torque and the entire torque delivery on the motor itself. And one of the most other important features here is the regenerative braking. Now, regenerative braking is quite unique to electric vehicles, right? For example, when you're traveling at 100 kilometers an hour and you brake, right, on any IC engine powered vehicle, what's happening is that you're wasting all of that momentum and energy as heat in the brake pads, right? For us, it means that we can turn the motors into a generator recuperate energy and power the batteries back again. We're actually charging the batteries back there. Right? And what you're seeing here essentially is the ability to control regenerative braking. So we have the ability to control different levels of feedback, how much energy is going back into the vehicle and what is the resistance that you feel when you're undergoing regenerative braking. And just to study this, right, we ended up renting a few Tesla's P100Ds, right, driving them around the hills and just getting the hang of it. And what we saw is that it had to be sort of that the vehicles adapt to you, right? So when you first start out with this vehicle, the F77, the performance, the regenerative braking feels very similar to what your engine braking, your cruising feels on a regular IC engine vehicle, right? But as you start to play around with the vehicle, as you get more comfortable, we start to suggest more ideas in terms of region. And what essentially happens is over a period of time, you start to sort of, this is a unique feature in electric vehicles where you can actually when you're cornering, you're actually gaining energy back into the batteries, and then you're pulling, putting them all out into the motors. So we let you play around with it, and the idea here is that the vehicle must adapt to you. It shouldn't be that you are adapting to the vehicle that is of tomorrow, right? And that's what is built out here. So that's the kind of control we have on region. Next up. Okay, so this gets quite interesting again. So we have multiple, so we have an entire inertial measurement unit on the vehicle, which means that this, is, this has nine degrees of freedom. It has three axis accelerometer, three axis gyroscope, a three axis magnetometer. What this means is that we have full, a full view into the roll, pitch, yaw, the lean angles, 
we can even sense when you're braking and you're using the front brakes how much the vehicle is pitching forward, right? That's the level of uh, data that we have on, on the vehicles. And what this helps is with tracking your uh, rides when you're on a track, for example. So what you're seeing here is this is a track that you're riding on. This is actual data. You have a view into the speed. You have a view into the lean, lean angles. You have a view into the entire power delivery. And this is what we mean by a connected vehicle. Next comes the energy, right? So we have three modular battery packs in this vehicle. And what you're seeing here is the charge status of each of those batteries, the temperature, the entire view into how much energy was consumed, how much was regained as part of your riding and your regenerative braking, and even how much CO2 you've actually saved by riding this vehicle, right? So that's part of what we're doing today. Another important piece that I think Narayan mentioned earlier is that we see this as not a product alone approach, right? There's the product piece and then there's the energy piece. And we are going to be setting up charging stations in Bangalore to begin with and then across the country. And this provides a view into where you are at any point of time and how close you are to the nearest station. And this information is always there as part of your mobile app and on the vehicle itself. Right, so coming to another feature that is again built ground up into the vehicle is something that we call preventive maintenance and diagnostics, right? So what this means is that the way that the vehicle is built out, the entire electronics system and all of the subsystems are built similar to how it's done in aircrafts, right? Which means that we have multiple temperature, voltage, current sensors, and we have a view into every subsystem and how much energy they're consuming. What this means is that we know how, how many units of energy was Gone, it has gone into the batteries, how much was delivered from the batteries to the electronics and the motor controller, how much went from the motor controller to the motor, and how much was finally delivered to the wheel of the vehicle. And we can de detect sort of any sort of inefficiency in the system and map that out, and this provides a view into doing that, where we ha are doing a complete diagnosis of the vehicle, we're checking every subsystem and reporting back any problem way before a rider can even know that it exists. Right? So this is one of those features, right? So it's doing an entire systems check, and it's reporting back on the status. So the idea here is, again, comes back to how we have been sort of as riders. I'm sure you all go to service centers, and it's not the best treatment that you get at service centers when you take your IC engine vehicle there, right? So what typically happens is that the company is very reactive to what you're, you're saying. You point out a certain problem, and they say, OK, come back some other day. Right? So that's what typically happens. In our case, what we wanted to do and we started out with is that we had to be proactive. That means we know the problems even before you actually experience it on the vehicle. And that is what we have achieved today with preventive maintenance and diagnostics on the vehicle. Awesome. Great. So this sort of sums up the entire ultraviolet connected experience on the vehicle. And what we're going to talk about is a bit on the technology side, right? Now, there are various aspects of technology that I can talk about for more than an hour, but I'm going to focus on just one piece, which is the most critical, fundamental aspect on the vehicle, which is the batteries, right? This forms sort of the core of the vehicle, and the entire vehicle has been built around the batteries, right? And the idea here is that all of our batteries, each module is meant to be connected and meant to be intelligent, and I'll talk about more of, more of this in a bit. So one of the fundamental principles right, that we've used when we design battery packs is very similar to how the aerospace industry and this, in general how NASA builds battery packs for their astronauts. So the kind of principles that we've used, for example, in their case, an astronaut has a backpack. It is running their life support systems, which means that safety is very critical. The, the weight of the entire battery pack has to be minimal. And of course, even a single small failure cannot lead to a catastrophic failure because it means death for the astronaut. Right? Now, we noticed that all of the vehicles that exist in the market today, none of them were actually building these batteries ground up. None of them were taking safety seriously. And for us, this was sort of a deal breaker when we looked at other battery packs around, around the world, not just in India. So we had to design the batteries from scratch. So what does this mean, right? So the batteries here are meant to be modular. So I think Narayan alluded to this a little earlier. 
the idea behind having modular batteries is that you should simply be able to remove these batteries and take them up if you live on the 15th floor in an apartment to charge it wherever you need, right? So this is one of the modes of charging. Within the batteries, so we, I spoke about safety, right? So there are multiple levels of safety when we talk about uh, the batteries. In our case, there's electrical safety, there's software, there's electronics, there's thermal, there's structural. And all of these are working in a coordinated way. For example, electrical safety works in a matter of seconds when we talk about slow blow fuses or fast burn fuses. Then there's software protection, which kicks in when microseconds. So there's several orders of magnitude, over a thousand, right? When you talk about between microseconds, milliseconds, and seconds. And each of those are meant to kick in at different points of time in case of an accident or any catastrophic scenario. And the idea is to prevent it from turning into sort of a thermal runaway. And this is core to what we have built out. And this is essentially is where we have multiple international patents filed. <laughs> Coming to the intelligence, right? So when we studied every battery pack available globally, so this was three years ago, what we saw is that very basic protections are provided. For example, you have over voltage protection, over current protection, uh, basic over discharge protection. And for us, that is not sufficient, right? So when we talk about intelligence, we're talking about much higher levels of hierarchy. We're talking about things like range prediction, right? And range prediction is a matter of how the rider actually rides the vehicle, what kind of roads are there, what is the climatic condition, which city is it in, and what is the um, gradation, what is the slope that you're riding in. And for us, this means that every single battery pack has the ability to judge what kind of rider is riding the vehicle and make a range prediction that is accurate for that particular rider, right? And this works in two ways. There's one, there's intelligence at the edge, which means what is running on the batteries, and then there's intelligence on the cloud, which means that we have the ability and our algorithms are running on the cloud, collecting data from every single battery pack that Ultraviolet has ever built and making predictions based on every rider of Ultraviolet vehicles to give you the best range estimate there is today. So essentially, we have the world's best range prediction algorithm. Right? So that's just on the intelligence bit, right? Next up. So there are a bunch of things and when we talk about communication and data, right? So this is very critical for us to make multiple decisions on the vehicle, as well as on our server side in terms of range predictions, et cetera. And there are multiple means of doing that. So each of these battery packs have both wired and wireless means of communication. Each of these has a LTE chip as well with GPS positioning and feedback. And what, essentially, what this essentially means is that once a battery pack is removed from a vehicle and inserted back, the terminals go live only if the battery is actually paired to the vehicle. So there's actual communication going on which is encrypted between the vehicle and the battery. And only if it is authorized to be used on this vehicle do the terminals actually go live. And this is a safety feature as what we've built out. Awesome. So next up. So we actually looked at multiple other modular batteries that are available today. And one of the things that we found in terms of the user experience was uh, quite a shoddy experience when you have batteries where you have to get another wire and plug it in and all of that. Right? So we had to build the connectors ground up. And this was an effort in itself, because the connectors had to be IP67 rated, which means that it works no matter if there's dust, there's water, in mated, unmated conditions. There has to be data transfer. There has to be power transfer. And today, what we have is connectors that we've custom designed that can be oriented in multiple angles, can still self-align, and has gone through multiple thousands of cycles on, on, on these batteries today. Awesome. So um, another aspect of building for India means that the vehicles have to be able to withstand various Indian conditions, right? So we're talking about shock, vibration, impact, uh, crashes. This is all part of our standard driving conditions, right? The roads are not great always, and we have to deal with that. And what we found is that battery packs that are built in the west or in the east were built for different conditions, road conditions, and which were not really durable, and we had to design that ground up as well. So today what we have is a battery pack that has what is commonly called crush zones or crumple zones in cars, and even if the battery pack is dropped or undergoes any sort of shock, there are members within the batteries to take that impact and not transfer that to any of the cells. Right? So this is what has been built out here today. This, this is an actual view in, into 
um, our lab. So this is one of our battery packs um, in terms of the battery management system, the cell level fuses. You can see all of that running here, right? Now, we've spoken about technology. We've spoken about modular batteries. Um, we've spoken about intelligence. Now, what we want to do is actually do a demonstration of how all of this converges to provide a very futuristic user experience. Um, I'm requesting the console to turn the bike by 45 degrees here. So this is, I think, personally my favorite part of the bike in terms of the UX. And when we started out thinking about it three years back, we were like, I mean, we see all these things happening in sci-fi movies and uh, it's about time things come into the real world. And it was outrageous at that point. We've made it happen. And let's get into how the whole modularity works and what we can do with it. Yeah, so everything is, like Neeraj mentioned, smart, connected. We're looking at an all-new futuristic experience. All I do is tap my app and... So there is provision for three battery modules on the F77. And like Neeraj mentioned, no hassle. As simple as removing it, inserting it back there. And each pack is eight and a half kgs. We started out with a sub 10 kg requirement, gotten it down to 8.5. Right? So of course the vehicle is smart and connected. We also have sort of a manual fallback for those folks who are old school. So we have complete control on the vehicle itself. Right, so this is a manual override. Cool. So So we saw the batteries, right? Now I briefly mentioned that we've built it to world-class standards. Now, what does this mean, right? So this is sort of crucial to what we're building out. Today, we have several, seven international patents filed on the, just the battery packs alone. We have the highest energy density of all modular battery packs globally. I'm not talking about India, I'm talking about globally. We have three times the power density of the leading competitive battery pack in the industry. Of course, 3x power density, what does it mean, right? So this is a standard question that we, we get asked. So for example, this is the ultraviolet vehicle. It uses three of these batteries, right? Now, we looked at all international competitors. We looked at Indian competitors. And if you look at the best batteries out there in the industry, how many of those batteries would it take to power the ultraviolet vehicle? So we actually wanted to know, right? So does it take five batteries? Does it take seven? It takes about nine of those competitors' batteries to power our vehicle. And we've achieved that with just three. Right? So that's, that's essentially what we mean by 3x power density. Right? So the idea here is that when we talk about energy density and power density, it means that for every kilogram of the battery that is on the vehicle, how much range do you get? How much power do you get? How many BHP do you get? Right? And it all boils down to that. And today what we have is a very futuristic vehicle which is built as per aviation standards and where weight is very critical, where power to weight ratio is very critical. And we have these batteries that are world class and sort of better than anything out there today. Cool. Coming to the charging technology, right? So one of the ways to charge these vehicles is to remove the batteries. There are other modes of charging as well. Um, the idea here is that we have a charger that is on the vehicle. It's called the standard charger. This is, this, this is meant to sort of do an overnight charging where we get to zero to, from 0 to 80% in about 3 hours, from 0 to 100% in about 5 hours, right? So this is for your standard day-to-day -day scenarios where you want to plug it in at home if you have a garage where you have a plug point, right? We also have an added accessory. This is meant for your long-distance travel. This essentially, let's say you're going from Bangalore to Chennai. Right? This is the ideal accessory to have. So what this, what this enables you to do is, you can carry that in your backpack. We've even designed it to fit in one third the size of a regular laptop battery backpack. Right? 
right? And you can charge your vehicles in about 50 minutes. You get 0 to 80%, 0 to 100% in about 90 minutes. So this is the fast charger. And of course, I think I mentioned earlier the charging pods as well. Um, these are, they're available in different configurations. They're available in the standard configuration and the fast charging configuration. The idea here is that you should be able to charge your batteries whether you're living on the 10th floor of an apartment or the 15th floor. You should not have to draw a line down to your bike or in the garage, right? And that's the idea behind the uh, home charging pods. Awesome. So I think uh, when it comes to availability of energy, of reliability of energy, we've covered every single aspect, right? We've seen from removable batteries to onboard sort of having chargers, uh, fast chargers, and even these pods, right? Now, we've been doing a lot of things to enable the fast tracking of electric vehicles in the market. And there's something more that we want to talk about here as well. So this is the ultraviolet F77. Like Neeraj mentioned, all of it from whatever we've absorbed and learned over the last several years to the whole team's efforts has gone into this. This is what we call the ultraviolet F77 lightning. And The show's not over. There's a couple of other things we want to unveil to you today. Introducing the shadow and the laser.
There's three personalities out here when we try to outline what the product is all about. Of course, one product or one personality wasn't doing justice. So the ultraviolet F77 Lightning is what we spoke about, synonymous with future technology. The shadow, I think you all guessed by now, the B2 Stealth Bomber is <laughs> sort of a theme behind all of the uh, work that has gone into that. And the laser is sort of synonymous with sports. There's a lot of accessories on this. You see the wheel caps, you've seen certain other performance tuning functions that Neeraj was talking about on the ultraviolet F77 laser. And And at this moment, we'd uh, like to call upon to stage one of our earliest supporters, endorsers, who's been in the loop with all aspects of how we've gone about doing this, none other than superstar Dulkar Salman. Thank you. Everyone. So, uh, there have been many amazing early supporters of Ultraviolet, so I don't think I have uh, any more credibility than any of them to be up here, except for the fact that I act in movies. Um, but I think more than anything, I'm a huge petrol head, and uh, this is such a cool company. You guys make me feel like really small, uh, not very cool, uh, <laughs> because I don't think I can do half of the things that these guys are doing. But, um, so how awesome are these bikes? I mean, I'm, I'm actually... <laughs> So, uh, full support team, UV. Um, but this is like Tron meets Tesla. It's like built by two Indian boys, a whole bunch of Indian boys <laughs> and girls, uh, you know, for India primarily. Um, I've, like, I've been sitting there thinking, what all am I going to say? Because there's so many things that I want to say. And I'm so bowled over. Um, I think we've been a, a part of this family from the very beginning. Um, but you know, it, it's very different when you go from just ideas and talks and, and saying, you know, you want to change the world and then you see the final outcome here. But uh, two rock star uh, founders <laughs> who, I know they keep referring to fighter planes and aircrafts, but I feel like they've built rocket ships. Um, such <laughs> a cool company and I'm just so happy to be here. Like. Um, I feel like there's so many so more things I to have you as part of the whole I feel like I should have had a presentation. <laughs> 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 All my bullet points, I'm like, I'm forgetting. <laughs> but amazing awesome. stuff, you guys. Uh, you. I feel like UV is going to be synonymous with EVs. I mean, EV is such a mm, word. I feel like UV should just take over. <laughs> <laughs> amazing work, you guys. Uh, I'm trying to meet the whole team. Uh, and yeah, I think they should do the talking. I want to just like gawk at the bikes a little more. Awesome. Thank you. Cool. Have some.